Hello and welcome to another one of my videos and in this video I'm actually going to cover a topic I have already actually done for a video in the past and this topic was why supercharging two strokes is pointless and counterproductive now I should have really called that video why supercharging crankcase induction two strokes is pointless and counterproductive because that was the type of engine I was on about now I did get comments coming back saying yes you can supercharge two strokes um, I've done it, this has done it and I will admit, there is certain types of two-strokes where ex um, superchargers or ex external scavenging techniques are used to generate the um, scavenging pressures. But the reason why this is done is because they don't use the crankcase itself as the um, compressor. So they actually do need an external method of, um, of upping the scavenging pressure to actually force the fuel air mixture into the actual um, cylinder and also to push the exhaust gases out. Now in a traditional crankcase induction system um, it uses the crankcase as the compressor and the piston. So basically you'll have a valve on the intake which stops any of the pressurised fuel air mixture going back out the intake. So as the piston goes down, the fuel air mixture starts to pressurise, which is normally around about 1.2 to 1.8 bar. As it continues down, it opens up the transfer port. This pressurised fuel air mixture shoots into the cylinder, and with some scavenging techniques, a lot of it does stay in the cylinder, but some of it will short-circuit out the exhaust. Now, in a two-stroke, the exhaust is an important part of the engine because the, the actual exhaust, when the piston uncovers the um, exhaust port, a pressure wave is sent down the exhaust and the exhaust actually bounces it back up the exhaust and actually meets the short-circuited charge that has escaped from the cylinder and pushes it back in. Now one thing to keep in mind, even with a traditional two-stroke with a performance exhaust, it will only work at its most efficient at a certain RPM range that, ex that that exhaust is tuned to. So even a normal traditional crankcase induction two-stroke only works at its most efficient for a very small portion of its actual um, rev range. Now if we go and take a supercharger and stick it directly onto the intake of this um, setup, the first thing that's going to happen is when the piston is starting to come down, um, the supercharger has already pressurised the air going into the crankcase. So this crankcase pressure is already, already above atmospheric pressure. As the piston goes down, it's having to exert more force on itself to pressurise the already pressurised charge. So that means you're losing out, you're actually putting more effort in, so you're using more power to actually compress this charge more. Um, as the actual piston uncovers the transfer ports, because this is a higher charge, this fuel air mixture is going to actually go into the combustion or the cylinder at a higher rate and like I say because the scavenging is actually with a lot of complicated mathematics designed for a certain pressure this isn't going to work no more and the actual fuel air mixture is just going to shoot straight out the exhaust now some of you are going yeah but the exhaust is going to bounce that back well the exhaust is designed for the pressures that this engine was running at before the supercharger was actually attached so the pressure wave, yes, has gone down the exhaust and might be coming back up, but the actual high pressures that the um, charge is exerting into the exhaust is actually counteracting that pressure wave, and the pressure wave is not strong enough to bounce it back into the combustion chamber. Now, and this will lead to um, volumatic um, problems, so volumatic efficiency will decrease because you're not getting your full charge into the um, combustion area. Um, you'll also find that you'll have a lot of fuel air mixture going out in the exhaust so hydrocarbons will actually go up within the exhaust system which as we all know is the downfall of normal two strokes without a external scavenging technique along with a crankcase induction technique on them. So I know I can go on like this all day I'll still get people coming back to us saying yeah I've supercharged crankcase induction two strokes it works daddy daddy da. Now, I've got two books here. This book says it, but I've got another book here that actually words it very short, simple, and it is actually very nice to read out. So I'll just zoom out. As we can see, this is the supercharging and turbocharging section of this book, which is the Hilner's Fundamental of Motor Vehicles and Technology. And in this section, we have a full section on two-stroke engines. 
So I'm just going to read this actual little um, paragraph out to you. Um, note that a two-stroke engine does not have an induction stroke created by a downward movement of, a, of the piston, but relies upon air being forced into its cylinders by some kind of pump usually the lower chamber beneath the piston, like a lot of two-strokes do. The two-stroke engine is therefore not supercharged unless the pressure of the air filling the cylinder is above atmospheric pressure. Yep, fair dues. Um, a two-stroke engine is normally pressure-charged as opposed to supercharged, either by using, by using the underneath of the working piston in the lower chamber or by using a separate cylinder as the charging cylinder. However, Two-stroke engines have been supercharged using separate air pumps such as roots type blowers. And as we can see, covered in that section, but we're not going to go to that. So, to sum this up, strictly a two-stroke engine cannot be supercharged unless the exhaust ports are um, arranged too close before the inlet ports close. So basically what that is saying is, unless the exhaust ports are closed when the pressurised air is actually going into the um, cylinder, that pressurised air is just going to go straight out the exhaust ports. It's physics. Now, I hope I've kind of cleared some things up here with um, the other video, and that's basically a more in-depth look with books and references. I shall put both these books in the description if you want to look at them. Very good books if you're into your automotive and stuff. I will back them up. But I shall leave it at that. Um, comment in the bottom. I always like your comments to see what your feelings and thoughts are on the subject. Um, as always, keep safe and I shall see you soon.